Hi, my name is Moshe Zelbin. I'm a teacher at Eisha Torah in Jerusalem. Um, one of the things that you find in the world today is this major debate about the question of God. You look on YouTube, you look at all the books that come out, The God Delusion by Richard Dawkins, In God We Don't Trust, Christopher, Christopher Hitchens, all these authors writing all these books attacking the idea of God. So the first thing that needs to be said is Judaism does have an answer to those questions. From a Jewish perspective, there's a strong rational basis for believing in God. There are, so to speak, proofs, rational evidence that back up the idea of why believing in God makes sense. That's not my point right now. My point now is that when you look at the question and you look at the debates, there's always one critical missing element, and that's called bias. How do you know when you're watching a debate if you're looking at it objectively? If you're watching the debate because you're rooting for the guy you want to win, or you're looking to poke holes in the guy who you want to lose, how do you know you're making an objective decision? And as long as we're not aware of our biases, we're not aware of our subjectivity, we could spend hours and hours debating the question. All we're really trying to do is convince ourselves and convince somebody else of what we want to be true, which isn't necessarily what is true. It reminds me of a famous story in the 1920s. Uh, there was a major debate among scientists around the world on the nature of the universe. You had some scientists believing that the universe was expanding. You had some believing that it was contracting. Um, the majority opinion among scientists was that the universe was static. It wasn't getting any bigger, wasn't getting any smaller. In the early 1920s, Edwin Hubble invented what was called the Hubble telescope, the most powerful telescope ever invented. He looks around the universe, he sees all these, he sees all these galaxies receding away from each other, he makes a bunch of calculations, comes to the conclusion, evidence, the universe is expanding. It's a settled debate. We now know it's expanding. He goes to a conference of physicists in Europe. He announces his findings. They give him a standing ovation. It was an amazing discovery. It happens to be that Albert Einstein wasn't at this conference. He was somewhere else in Europe at the time. A colleague of his wrote him a letter and said, Hubble just discovered that the universe is expanding. Here's the evidence. So Einstein wrote back, I read this in a biography, Einstein wrote back and said, I find the idea of an expanding universe irritating. He's irritated that the universe is expanding. Hmm. That doesn't sound like a very intellectual reaction. It sounds to me like a little bit of an emotional reaction. He refused to believe it. And he was so sure that he was right, he challenged Hubble. And they sat down and they worked through all the equations. And when Einstein himself worked through the equations, he came to the same conclusion. The universe is expanding. He still refused to believe it. He spent months and months reworking the equations, trying to change them around and put in different factors. And he finally found a way of working the equations to make it come out that the universe is static. <laughs> so he convinced himself of what he wanted to be convinced of. He was so off base, though, because the whole rest of the world had accepted that the universe is actually expanding. And as the years went by, it became a consensus around the world that Einstein was wrong. He still refused to believe it. It took him 15 years till the end of his life. When he was at Princeton, he writes in his biography that for the last 15 years of his life, he made no discoveries because he was still stuck on his old model of the universe, which was totally out of date. By that time, the evidence was so overwhelming, he had no choice. He conceded. He said, I was wrong. I should have figured this out years ago. The universe is actually expanding. In his final memoirs, Einstein writes, not accepting the idea of an expanding universe 15 years ago, he says it was the biggest blunder of my scientific career. He was totally out to lunch. Now, it's not because Einstein is stupid. Einstein was clearly a genius. Everybody recognizes that. But you could be the biggest genius in the world. If you really want to convince yourself of something, you can convince yourself of just about anything you want to. You'll use your genius to rationalize and come to whatever conclusion you want to. So before you enter into the debate, does God really exist? Or you enter into the debate about politics in Israel, or you enter into the debate of the divinity of Torah, step number one is check yourself. Am I looking at the question objectively? Am I open to hearing both sides of the argument equally and coming to an objective conclusion? Or am I only arguing and investigating to convince myself of whatever I feel like hearing? If we're doing that, we're wasting our time. If we're open to truth and we're open to objectivity, you can make unbelievable discoveries about what's really out there in the world. That's our job.